Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is the match preview Everton versus Fulham and a really good opportunity for Everton to get themselves up that table a little bit and make it make it look a little bit more respectable. It is good opportunity. Obviously, we'll be playing after a lot of clubs have played as mm. well. So we'll sort of know where we can go if we get the victory. But we need to start winning games at Goodison Park. Still only won one this season. Mm. So we need to get that going. But Hopefully we can build on uh, the back of a good away result last week at Ipswich Town. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it is that little bit of the season where things have calmed down a little bit and good opportunity with a decent set of fixtures before obviously the chaos of decent. But I think we're all we're all looking at that going. Mm -hmm. oh, we need we need our set, we need to set up a few good points first. But Fulham at home used to be. Used to be great, huh? nailed on three points most of the time, mm -hmm. but uh, the last few years hasn't been uh, hasn't been straightforward. And yeah, we played them earlier last season, and and when we're beaten with a late goal, and we have to turn that round. And if we do, you know, we're on the same points as them. Yeah, I mean, we had a runner. 22 wins at home against them and then they've won the last three so obviously it has turned around and he also beat us on penalties in the League Cup last mm. year as well after a 1-1 draw to Goodison didn't he and he beat going to penalties and that so it did used to be one that you looked at as three points for Everton um, and that has changed but it's like you just said a lot of people were they meant Lord and full and start but they were, they were saying how good a start it was Um and we obviously had a terrible start and yet if Everton were to win on Saturday they would you know they'd be right next to them wouldn't they and that's the that's why it is important we've got to keep a bit of momentum going we're four unbeaten now going into this one and if we were to win on Saturday then we'd have took seven out of nine from the last three home games and that we've got to almost it feels like get up that head of steam mm before December I know people yeah. keep mentioning it but there are a lot of tough fixes in December but if you can get yourself on a good run and drag yourself halfway up the table with a bit of momentum then games that looked you look at and go they're really difficult there's less pressure on them therefore yeah. you're more of a threat to those teams yeah, than yeah. sort of the other way down whereas if you're almost having a couple of games unbeaten and then you lose two or three on the run. And this, I guess this is what Sean Dyche has got to try to get away from. His Everton career so far has been wins games in chunks and then has periods of time yeah. we don't win. And this team's got to get away from that as well. It's not just the manager. This team's got to get away from that. And if we could get over the line at the weekend, then obviously we go to Southampton, we go to West Ham. Could be at least four points in them two games for Everton. And by the time the next sort of international break comes around, you're looking at a different, a sort of different picture of, of how the mm. first sort of chunk of the season gone, but it all starts on Saturday and it will be a very, very tough game. No, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I said there, like, they had a good start to the season and the last couple of games, obviously, defeat them playing two Champions League teams. Mm. Um, and it could even itself out on Saturday. I mean, Everton would need to win, I think, 3 0 to go above them, so can't really see that happening mm. but if we were to get a win then I, I couldn't care less about what kind of win it is as long as we got a win but it, it it is that again perceptions everything isn't it no one was coming into the season looking at Fulham saying they did a the relegation threatened Fulham and they, you know what did they finish last season points wise it wasn't I think Everton would have finished above them without mm, the points so, so it's like it's perception again that perception of who you are and, and where you're going and, and again I looked at you look at Fulham it's like no one's looking and thinking they're in any kind of danger but that's the kind of thing that hangs over us all the time and it's so it's so odd isn't it's it self perpetuating no exactly yeah it's it's so odd again I think we spoke about this you know around the Palace game and stuff as well it's so it's so weird Um and yet that you know Fulham as I said started well and just gone tailed off a little bit but the, you know they've got they've got some exciting players. They're mm. building, they're building every single year. They're trying, mm. you know, they're making sure that they become a, an ever present in in the Premier League, like they were for a very long time. And mm. um, and they've done really well, haven't they? Because they're, they're, again, they're not a massive club. They're not oh. a massively supported club. But they've managed to. 
just get a lot of things right. And obviously, with having Marco Silva in there, who's good, experienced manager now, obviously, um, they're getting stuff like the best out of him as well now, aren't they? Yeah, they have done really well because obviously they're on Chelsea's door. Chelsea are on their doorstep, aren't they? The, both the two clubs are really close to each other, so they are a they're, you know, they're a decent sized club. Mm. Um and they have good make good progress. They obviously went down. Come up, went down again, didn't they? And then if they come back up and being really solid, you know, Marco brought them up, they've done really well, they've built on it. They've looked solid and they've had the players again and they have got some exciting players and like you know, really like Smith Rowe. I think he's an excellent signing for them. Mm. Obviously Alex Obobi, we know all about, has gone there and done quite well for them. Jimenez has come on back, he's had a great start of the season. They have got they've got some good players, you know, yeah. and that that's Pereira in midfield, a good player. You know, we know know all about Anthony Robinson. So, you know, you look through the team, Bernd Leno and goal generally has a good game against Everton. Uh, even if the other case and he's susceptible to mistakes, normally doesn't do them against us. So mm -hmm. um, I really like Marco as a manager anyway. So I think he's done really well there. And this we go into this one knowing it's going to be a, a tricky game for us. But it's about time we beat them. You know, three defeats on the run at Goodison against them. That needs to stop this Saturday. No, absolutely. And not only Chelsea on the doorstep as well, it's Brentford as well. It's now yeah, now well, suddenly really. become... Um, but Chelsea literally are on no, the corner. No, no, but it, it's them. become, you know, become a, um, someone that they have to compete with as mm -hmm. well in, in West London. Mm -hmm. So they've done really, really well. Let's have a little look at the team from their defeat against Aston Villa. So obviously straight away, Anderson's going to be missing, isn't yeah. he? He's suspended. He was sent um, off, yeah. They obviously got Kenny Tete, good player. Calvin Bassey's in there, so... They'll replace Anderson Anthony Robinson, we know all about. Then they had Sander Bears, he brought in from Bern, he's a good player. He got on the Pereira there, and then ahead of them, Adama Traore, we know all about him. Yeah. His pace, Alex Awobi off the left, Smith Rowe just off him. And then, you know, all good players, some good Premier League experience as well. Mm. And the pace, the pace of obviously Adama Traore against Michelenko. Mm. You do sort of go, Michel's not the fastest, but he is. I don't think anyone's. No one can going get to get there. to it. No, but it's how you defend them. It's how you play it? him, it's isn't it? How you play him. And again, Everton might, well, Everton probably will sit a bit deeper mm. um, and give Fulham a little bit more of the ball. You just don't allow them to get into the space they run into, do you? Mm. That's that's the main thing with them. Um, that's, the, that's that's all you can do, really. And obviously, with uh, Raul Jimenez up front as well, who obviously is always seems to have a a decent record against us. We've certainly started his career at Wolves. Oh, getting up to a great... Let's have a little look at his numbers. Here you go. Eight games played, four goals this season from an XC of 2.89. One assist as well. Big chance created three. That is. And there's his heat map as well. And he was obviously a really good centre forward. He, he was excellent at Wolves. A player who Everton were linked with many times when he was in Portugal. He went off to Wolves and done really well. Obviously, had a terrible injury. Mm. Um, and it took him time to work his way back. And he never rediscovered this form at Wolves. Yeah. And a few eyebrows were raised when Fulham took him. But he did get better and better last season. And he is a, he's a really good foil for the rest of their team. But he started this season absolutely tremendously well. So, five goal, you know, five, sorry, goal involvement in his last six games, mm. I think it is. So, He's doing brilliantly for them. Again, we'll have to, we'll have to watch out. So. And it's going to be interesting who he's up against, isn't it? Because if we, obviously, if we just have a little look at the Everton team from last week. You know, there are, a, you know, the option is there to bring Jared Brantway back into the side now. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be something the manager has to decide on, isn't it? Whether he he goes with you know, a player who's doing all right in Michael Keane mm -hmm. or, or says, no, we go with what our best option is. And of course, we've got a couple of first-team right-backs on the bench as mm -hmm. well. So again, does he stick with Ashley Young or does he make that change? Um, he stick with Ashley Young. <laughs> I think he will as well. So there are, Young there are, played well, though. No, he did He did well. But that's the thing, isn't that what we're talking about? Michael Keane's had a brand, but then at right-back, you've got a couple of natural right-backs in there, and it's again, it's the same decision, isn't it? Mm. Or is it the same decision? That's what the manager's got to make. He can't, you know, he might have different reasons for keeping 
Ashley Young in but taking Michael Keane out but they both did equally well last week mm. and obviously Michael Keane getting the goal was a, was a huge moment for us in the game just to settle us down but he did have it but that, that's that's the decisions he's going to have to make this week and he doesn't often get the opportunity to make those cha- changes no no I just feel like for him the safer easier option is Ashley Young to stay in at right back mm. Michael Keane's a big one because obviously I gave him man on a match last week I thought he had a good game scored a cracking goal but Jared Blantwaite is, mm. is, a, is, a, is just better. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And, I, you know, it, it is a difficult one because I am a believer in if, you know, if the lad's got the shirt and he does well, how do you create that culture if you've got a performing? You're in? You don't want to sort of disenfranchise any players by ones who are trying mm. to battle to get in by thinking no matter what I do, I don't play. The minute like you're available, I'm yeah. back out the side. But there is always a hierarchy of clubs. Mm. There always is, you know. Man City once Kevin De Bruyne is fit again, he's going to be straight back in the team yeah, because yeah. he's got that quality. Jared Brantwaite has got real quality. Gives us a balance of the left footed centre back. Played in our only other good yeah. win this season, so it, that will be a tough call for him. I think with Michael Keane. I think Young's an easy call. He played well last week. Played really well at Leicester. Did well again. You know, mm. I think for Young it's an easier one because he's. Right back position's an odd one for Evan at the minute. James mm. Coleman's been injured. So he's sort of just, you know, you can't really trust that at the minute. He's got to get mm. it, let him get his fitness up. Yeah. Patterson, not convinced Dykes likes him, but also he's coming back off a long injury. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, they're not really decisions. Ashley Young's fit and doing okay, but the Michael Keane, Jared Brantwaite, is the key one. And I'm not sh- I, I do feel like he'll opt with Brantwaite, but... It wouldn't be the world's biggest shock if Brantway's just sub at the weekend and he, he rewards Keane for a couple of decent displays against Newcastle. Yeah, it? and what is noticeable over the last few weeks is it's plays with experience that have sort of dug Everton out of the hole a little bit. The, mm. the average age last week was 30. Um, and, you know, you, we know the manager does like that that level of experience. He mm-hmm. does like his senior players. And I think you saw that again with the Ipswich game of having those players who've been in around the Premier League. He, he, he do, you know, we all know he sort of, he, he prefers that. He do, mm-hmm. there, there'll, be, there'll be time for the younger players, but for us that time just hasn't been there. And, of course, he started the season with, you know, Tim Boone and playing in midfield mm-hmm. and, Although he had a decent start, you know, I don't think the manager would have done that. I you know, we, but we know he wouldn't have done that. And, you know, we took him out the side and now he's got an injury. So mm. uh, he, he doesn't, he, he does prefer getting through the, the tricky situations with the tried and the trusted. And it can be the difference. It can, it can, the experience can shine. You know, the core has come back into midfield. And obviously, a just kind of gay there last week. That, though, they're the players who've been there and seen it and done it for him. So uh, he, He's not one to, to just... He hinted at that, though, didn't he, in, the, um, in his after-match press conference for Ipswich at the weekend, because he, he mentioned Laurel Mangala, who mm. had had a couple of decent games, if you like, for Everton. Mm. Uh, and he said, the core and address us sort of know what we do. Mm. And Laurel's just got here kind of thing, yeah. so he, he does air on... It's the way he is, he mm. is. Some managers, are, some managers are more attacking and more... Uh, will take more chances and move things about. He likes what he likes and mm. the people who've, who've done it for him before get rewarded. So I imagine this midfield two will still be, I think he'll still be Decore and Garner at the weekend. I think Mangala will have to just uh, have a place yeah. on the bench again. I, I've, I've no real issue with it. No, I fully, I fully understand that. I, mm. I fully understand, you know, going with what works. Mm. Um, it's creating those opportunities for changing it, isn't it? And mm. of course, uh, the bench is is one of those situations. You you know, we we all know. We're not gonna have anyone. As far as I'm right, the only one we might have back Linston. is, is sort of, uh, Linston. We'll have Linston back yeah. in illness, which is fine. He missed out last week, and we'd have Brantwaite or we'd have Michael Keane yeah. adding to the bench, wouldn't we? We had two goalies and three right backs on yeah. the bench last week, which is never yeah. ideal. No, but and that, so, again, that that's something that frustrates me that needs to be clarified is like again we you said to me before we've used the least amount of subs in the Premier League which yeah. is no shock to me no, whatsoever no. and I think that's something that we just have to get a little bit better of course having an extra week of Nathan Patterson and Seamus Coleman in training builds up the, the trust and 
I just it's just something I think as I said it's what's always frustrated me about Sean Dyche more than anything is his in-game management it's that ability to know when to bring a player on for the right time because whether you like it or not five subs now has changed the game again mm -hmm. it, it creates a scenario where half the team are fresh mm -hmm. and we saw that last week we saw we don't get me wrong it wasn't like I was hiding behind the couch watching you know but it did give them an opportunity back in the yeah game. we only only made one sub and I think when you're playing at home okay you don't want to fall into the trap you're making subs for the sake of it but I just think that that some other managers who are more prepared who've got better squads of course and mm. that has to be the caveat is that they're willing to make those changes at the, they know when to make those changes because maybe they've had just had far more experience of making those mm. changes knowing when to bring a player on they've got a game might have a Champions League game on a Tuesday or something they're like right you're doing an hour mm. and I'm going to bring him on and it's not really going to change the game because you come in um, see last week when Mangala come on he, t he couldn't, didn't have a chance to get in the game because mm. At that point, we were under the cosh, and he's not the kind, not under the cosh, sorry. We were, they were having more of the ball. The 81st minute, though. That's what I'm ball. saying. We have to sort of get to that position where we're bringing those players on a little bit earlier. So so the game do, hasn't got to that point yet. Mm. And number one, you're not allowed, number one, you're not allowing it to get to that mm. point. Or if it does get to that point, just naturally, because they're the home team, then I'm going to go, he's in the game by then, he's found his foot and he found his level. Because going onto the pitch is not easy. Some players aren't ever good at going on the pitch as a sub. No. They're just not. No. Can't get up to the speed of it. And I think that's the thing now. It's like, yes, we've still got a lot of players missing. But there are senior players, Seamus Coleman and Patterson. It's been around long enough that you just like the manager to go, you know what? I can make a change here, which will benefit us. Mm -hmm. Now, it the defensive because I'm not 100% sure whether, whether at what stage he, he's going to get back to trust and better or because it's because it, like it, it feels like to me now it's like no actually don't I'm I trust waiting. Dom now yeah. I trust Dom Dom can play I think 90 odd minutes no you'd like that I think the other the thing as well is that again the stats there from since he became a manager he's used less subs than anybody in yeah. history over his time mm. Which so therefore it tells you he just he doesn't like making those yeah, changes. Yeah. But I think he will have to revolve yeah, with yeah. that because everybody else is doing it. You you're losing the fresh. We saw it with Bournemouth. The game simply changed because it was a hot day. And our players were knackered after seventy minutes mm. and they threw half a team on who were fresher. Yeah. And we came, we, we just went yeah, yeah. at the end. And even the Newcastle game, Anthony Gordon, they had a couple of chances late on, they'd made changes. Ipswich, the only time they got a little foothold in the games when they made the five changes and we didn't now okay they didn't have the quality to to turn yeah, it yeah. if they'd have got a goal who knows but they didn't and that's mm. fine but I think it is something we have got to look at yeah. it'll, it'll be easier for him once there's more options yeah, of course, course yeah. but he still needs that fresh legs let's have a little look at uh, the match pack this Saturday Everton take on Fulham in the Premier League. Everton were unbeaten in their first 27 home league games against Fulham between 1949 and 2018, winning each of the last 22 of those. Since then, they've lost their last three at home against Fulham. Fulham are unbeaten in their last five Premier League games against Everton, keeping four clean sheets in the process. All three of those wins in that run have come at Goodison Park. Since losing their first four Premier League matches this season, Everton are unbeaten in four games. Only once have the Toffees gone five unbeaten under Sean Dutch, doing so in April and May this year. Fulham have scored the first goal in each of their last five Premier League games, although they've lost the last two. Only six teams have lost three in a row after scoring first. Most recently, Sheffield United in April and May last season. There you go. Mm. Mm. I've learned so much. Fair play. <laughs> I've learned. I'd so love that voice there to be in a world. In a world. You know that with yeah. the first twenty-seven yeah. games, that kind of thing. So obviously, it's all about just getting the points, isn't it? Yeah. Again, it's Absolutely. all about getting the points. It's another home game. It's an one to another one to tick off. Mm. Um, and if we get the three points come, ah, uh, uh, quarter eight. Or whatever <sighs> on uh, on Saturday, then we'll all be happy, won't we? And mm -hmm. we're keeping the run going, and it gives an opportunity to the players to come back, and then we'll be looking to an away game the following week where you're like, good opportunity again, that isn't it? Mm -hmm. So players, 
continue doing what they've been doing the last couple of weeks, getting the clean sheet again. It won't be easy, you know, the likes of a wall will be coming back to try and silence the fans and, and but let's say uh, hope that we silence them and get the three Live points. On. Get the three points Do we? and get to uh, the splendour of, of mid table. And double figure points. Yeah. Wow. Why wouldn't you? Mm. Quarter of the way there. With three points. But all but sort of already quarters of the No, way. I'm talking about like the the the, the, sp- the one everyone wants, which is mm, the forty four. Yeah. The sweetener. Yeah. The forty four spot. Oh, okay. Everyone Definitely. wants that. Everyone wants it. Everyone wants that. It's called the Palace Zone, it's called. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Palace well, Zone. Well, I'd love forty four yeah. points, I think like that. So yeah. Confident. I'm never confident. No, I thought no. you were always confident. I am oh, always, I but I'm thinking. No, I'm just thinking. I hate our five games. No, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm going for a narrow. I think it'll be a narrow Evan when I do that. Mm-hmm. I think we win this one. It'll be tough because they're, be tough. they're a good they're side. A but side. I, I'd fancy us at home with the crowd. I think we've got to. This is a game we've got to really take advantage of right now. Mm-hmm. And they're not in great form, and we've had two very yeah, difficult yeah. games. But we've got to take advantage of that, and that'll build us moving forward. There you go. Yeah. 2 1 win. Yeah. Feels about right. Um, <laughs> Everton. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts in the comments on this one. Do you fancy it? Are you confident? Would you think? Shout out Brandway back. Let us know in the comments. If you want more great videos, daily live videos with no adverts, check out Toffee TV Premier. The link is in the description. QR codes come on the screen. Thanks for watching. See you later.